So what evidence do we have that evolution does indeed incur over time? I mean, we've discussed how evolution can happen through natural selection, but do we have evidence that this mechanism works? In lesson 20, you're going to be presented with a new phenomenon for which scientists have formulated a claim. As we explore this phenomenon, we will examine different lines of evidence that either support or refute this claim. Today, you're going to need a pencil, the journal slip, your science journal, a pair of scissors, and glue. Now, imagine that you saw something like this in person. Or maybe you were this guy. And I imagine you're just paddling along, having a good old time on your stand up paddle board in the middle of the bay, and then next thing. <laughs> oh my god! Holy hell! Holy hell. <laughs> or maybe you got to experience this. Listen, listen to what, what's happening. Open your phone. Whoa. 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 So whales are magnificent creatures that continue to amaze us. They're built perfectly for the ocean. You might say they have favorable traits or adaptations that help them survive in the water. Just take a look at their streamlined bodies and their fins. Both traits are perfect for moving through the water. But whales didn't always look like they do today. In fact, evidence implies that the ancestral whale looked much different from these modern day counterparts. Really different. Really, really different. Paleontologists claim this. They claim that whales evolved from land-dwelling mammals. That's a bold claim, right? I mean, land mammals don't really look anything like a whale. It's a pretty interesting phenomenon, if you ask me. But what evidence are paleontologists using to support this claim? If scientists are going to make such a statement, they need to be able to support it with both evidence and reasoning. Hmm, what evidence might they be using? Yeah, I heard it. I heard somebody say fossil evidence right out loud to their computer screen. The term fossil refers to any trace of past life. A fossil can be an organism's remains, such as plants, shells, teeth, even bones. In this case, paleontologists have uncovered bones and pieced the bones together to recreate what the skeleton of the animal may have looked like. They have dated these fossils from 34 million years ago to as far back as 55 million years ago. Today, you're going to have the opportunity to examine this fossil evidence for yourself to create a timeline of how whales might have evolved. Are you ready to get started? Here we go. Let's look at the first fossil strip you have at the end of your journal slip. Paleontologists have pieced together the skeleton of a creature that they call a duradon. If you examine the skeleton closely, it can tell you a lot about the type of environment the animal was best suited for. First, you can see these vertebrae bones that make up the animal's spine or backbone. Take a close look at the size, length, and shape of these bones. There's even a measurement scale right here below each skeleton so that you can compare measurements between different creatures. I can also see bones right here of a rib cage Again, these bones have a certain size, length, and shape. Looking even more closely, I see what appears to be something like a front leg with the shoulder blade, an upper part, a lower part, even phalanges. Again, take note of the size, shape, and length of these bones. Is the bone structure more suited for land or water, and why? 
Here we have a close-up of Duradon's skull. We can look at the shape of the skull, the size of the skull. I see the upper jaw right here, the lower jaw right here, the teeth. Does this bone structure appear more suited to land or water? Why do you think so? After you have closely, and I mean closely, examined the entire skeleton of the creature, decide whether the bone structure points to a land creature, terrestrial, or a sea creature, marine. Then justify your choice by giving specific examples of how particular bones make it suited for land or water. This part of the activity is very important. Mrs. Zanone and I will note the quality of your observations. Now, one last thing is important. The last picture that you see right here is an artist's representation of what Duradon may have looked like. But do not base your observations on this picture because it's an inference paleontologists have made and not actually fossil evidence. Justification should be based on the bone evidence you examine. Let's go on to the next one. The bones of the next skeleton belong to Pacaina. Take a look at the bones making up the entire skeleton. Again, you'll see the vertebrae bones making up the backbone and maybe some vertebrae that end in a tail right here that we call caudal vertebrae. There appear to be shoulder bones and even some hip bones. And we have leg bones and ribs. And don't forget about the skull, the zoom in of the skull and the measurements. Take time to analyze and fill out your observation table. Pause the screencast and do this now. Pachycetus is up next. You should be getting the hang of making observations. One thing to note in this skeleton, do you see it? Yeah, there's missing bones, like here and here. Well, that doesn't mean that these bones don't exist. It just means paleontologists haven't found them during excursions. Go ahead and make your observations on your journal slip. Again, only use fossil evidence. I know it's really tempting to use the artist rendition here to support your ideas, but just stick to the fossils. Basilosaurus is fossil evidence number four. Examine the skeleton of Basilosaurus and the skull now and make your observations. Rhodocetus is fossil number five. Again, make your observations. Compare the size and the shape of the bones to some other ancestors that you've been observing. Do this now. Ambulocetus is the last skeleton. Take a look at the shape, size, and length of all of the bones and make your observations. It's now time to create your timeline. If you're working off of a printed copy, cut out the fossil strips using a scissors and then glue them on the timeline from the oldest ancestor, right down here, to the most recent ancestor, which would be all the way up here. If you're working digitally, then just type the name of the ancestor right in the box from oldest to most recent. Remember, paleontologists claim that whales evolved from ancestors that may have lived on land. This claim should help you create your timeline. Take time to do this now. For today, all you need to do is submit a copy of your journal slip. Tomorrow, we'll examine some further evidence to see the timeline that paleontologists have proposed, and you can compare your timeline to theirs. Until tomorrow, keep thinking and keep learning.